Hey, so hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Just before we start, I just want to get into a few housekeeping rules. Uh, you all would have noticed that your videos and your mics have been automatically turned off. Please keep them off at this point just so that we can limit the amount of interference and background noise. I will also turn my video off once we start the presentation just to limit um, the amount of distraction as well. If you do have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to ask them. Please use the question and answer box that's located at the top or the bottom of your screen. If you hover your cursor over that area, it will generally pop up and you'll see a little Q&A box. So please put your questions in there and I will try and get to as many as possible at the end of the presentation. So don't put your questions in the chat. Please definitely use the Q&A box. Uh, the uh, actual presentation will be available on YouTube on, YouTube, on the EWT um, channel. So that'll be shared in the next day or so. Okay, we'll just give it another minute to wait for any last few people to join. Okay, so thanks everyone again for joining. My name is Samantha Nicholson and I'm the coordinator of the African Lion Database. And I'm based at the Endangered Wildlife Trust's head office in Johannesburg. So today I'll just be giving a very brief presentation on the overview of um, Africa's lions and giving a little bit of a brief presentation into the African Lion Database. So to start with, I think it's obviously very important to start off with our animal of the hour, and that is the lion. So lions are the only species of wild large felids that live in groups, and these groups are called prides, and they can number anywhere between two and 30 individuals. Some areas have actually had records of prides that are larger than 30, but it just does depend on the ecosystem. So prides are made up of a dominant male or a group of males called a coalition, and they are generally uh, brothers or quite closely related. The females within a pride are all related to one another. And like other carnivores, lions are an important element of healthy ecosystems. So because they prey on other animals, they help to keep populations in check and prevent their overpopulation. So through this hunting, carnivores actually maintain populations of your browsers and your grazers. And as, as such, they prevent their overabundance and, and protect vegetation from being too heavily grazed or browsed. So the lion is Africa's largest cat. So a male lion can be between 1.8 and 2.1 meters long, and that excludes the one meter long tail. He would stand at approximately 1.2 meters high and weigh anywhere between 170 to 230 kilograms. So just out of um, interest sake, 230 kilograms is roughly the weight of one fifth of a small vehicle, or it's the weight of two giant pandas. So as we can expect, a female lion or a lioness is considerably smaller with a body length of 1.5 meters and has a shoulder height of 1.1 meters. And generally females weigh a lot less than the male, weighing anywhere between 120 and 180 kilograms. So although the lion is one of the most researched big cat species in Africa, there is plenty of uncertainty with regards to how many there are and where exactly they can be found across the continent. So the data that exists to actually share this information is kept in various institutions, be it research organizations with individual researchers or governmental or governmental organizations, or the data also is stuck in published papers or reports. And this has very, li very limited conservation impact. And this is partially due to the fact that there's been no long-term data repository or project to actually store this critical data as well as to actually maintain it and keep the data as up to date as possible. And not having such a repository is an issue as it doesn't allow for conservation practitioners to see a continental picture of the state of Africa's lions and to truly understand what is happening in terms of their global population and distribution. So in October 2018, the Endangered Wildlife Trust began an exciting new project to develop the African Lion Database. 
So the project is, itself is actually undertaken on behalf of the broader conservation community and under the auspices of the IUCN CAT Specialist Group. And it's undertaken with financial support from the Lion Recovery Fund and National Geographic. So the overarching task of the ALD is to consolidate lion population and distribution data that exists. We have got plans underway to extend it to include anthropogenic threats. So that includes lions that have been killed by peoples, either through poisoning, conflict or poaching. Um, but that will begin in the near future. So this kind of information is important because the more we know about a species, the better we can protect them by guiding conservation action and by prioritizing funding in, funding in areas that need it most, and also by identifying areas which are in need of urgent conservation intervention. So the goal is that the African Lion Database, or ALD, will be used to compile, analyze, and store data on lion distribution, abundance, and their population trends. So there are many intended functions of the ALD, but the two most critical are to firstly assist with a continuous assessment of the status of lion populations on a continental, a regional, and a country level. And secondly, through this robust data collection process, we plan to identify gaps where research is needed to data pertaining to lion population and distribution information. So this is just a little bit of a sneak preview into what our distribution map is looking like at the moment. In the last year alone, we've contacted 304 individuals from various different institutions to encourage their data to be included in the ALD. Of which 33% of those individuals have included their data in the project. And we've also gone through over 100 different papers and reports to look for information that can be incorporated in the ALD. So this map actually just shows the areas where we do have data. And at this point in time, we actually only have 25% of known line range included in the ALD. So, but you can see from looking at the map now from the data we have got, these are the logos of all the different organizations that have contributed. And you can see what a mammoth task this is and that it really is a conservation community project with everyone working together to try and pull all this data together to actually benefit the species. So we have a lot more data that we do need to collect. I mean, only 25% is included at this point. So for the rest of the presentation, I would just like, to do, just like to share with you some of the information that we have got that is available on lion population distribution in Africa. The figures that I am going to show are from a study that we did in 2018. So like most other carnivore species around the world, the lion has lost considerable amounts of their range. These six carnivores shown here are, act, are actually the carnivores that have the greatest estimated range contractions of all. In fact, they've all seen range contractions of more than 90% since historical times. And lions have actually seen the fourth largest range contraction of all carnivore species, with their once historic, historic range being contracted by 94%. So as you can imagine, these species face numerous threats such as habitat loss, a loss of prey, and direct poaching and also conflict with people. And these threats have largely led to their significant population decline. So as you can see from this map over here, you can really see how their range in Africa has contracted. The hashed lines across the African continent show where they once were known to occur. The gray kind of areas show where their distribution was mapped at in 2006. And our recent mapping process in 2018 shows that their range has shrunk further to these kind of pink and coral blocks and that you see on the maps. So you can really see how their range has contracted over time. So lions historically occurred in 46 African countries, but today they only occur in 26, having been extirpated from 13, and they're believed to be extinct in another six. So just looking at this map here, if you look at the red, you can see where they once historically occurred through parts of Europe, Asia, and much of Africa. So I'm sure a few people may have done a bit of a double take at the title of the slide and think that I perhaps made a typo, but I can guarantee you I haven't. There is a small remnant population of lions outside of Africa. And the only one to be known to occur is in India. And this population of lions, known as the Asiatic lions, are isolated to the southern areas of the Gujarat province in India. And I was very fortunate to visit Gya National Park in February and actually see these lions. 
And while the Asiatic lions do look fairly similar to our African lions, there are a few notable physical differences, such as the more pronounced belly fold in the Asiatic lions, um, which you can see in that top image over there, you can see that, that faint belly fold. And the Asiatic lions also tend to be a little bit smaller than our African lions. And what's really interesting is that recent genetic studies have actually shown that Asiatic lions are more genetically are closely related to lions found in West and Central Africa, as opposed to lions that we have in Southern Africa. I think it's also important to point out here that these Asiatic lions do not overlap with any tiger populations, so there's no risk of um, interbreeding. So in the last few decades, there's been increasing concern over the fate of this iconic African species. And this is rightly so, because in the last 25 years alone, Africa has lost half its population of wild lions. And although a few areas have reliable estimates of lion populations within their borders, it's generally understood that the African lion population is declining. And using the data that is currently available, it is estimated that there are approximately 25,000 lions left in Africa. And these lions are distributed in approximately 100 different populations across the continent. So only seven countries are estimated to have more than a thousand lions. In descending order, they're Tanzania, Botswana, South Africa, Kenya, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, and Zambia. And 51% of the other remaining wild lion populations actually have fewer than a hundred lions. And six countries have less than 30 lions. In ascending order, they're Malawi, Senegal, Niger, Rwanda, Angola, and Nigeria. But what is really positive to note is that countries like Malawi and Rwanda um, have increasing populations, and that is through the efforts of reintroducing lions back into their protected areas, oops, sorry, that occur within their boundaries. So Akagera National Park, for example, in Rwanda, reintroduced lions in 2015 after they were hunted out in the early 1990s. And what's really positive is that within the first year of lions being present in Akagera, the population actually doubled with the birth of 11 cubs. But it's not all doom and gloom. Through this extensive data collection process, we've actually, we've actually received some really exciting records of out-of-range out records for lions. And this may hint at the re-establishment of resident pies in areas where they were previously thought to have disappeared. So on this slide over here, there's just a couple examples of these out-of-range records. The first that I'd like to briefly chat about is um, in central Cameroon, where a recent exhibition, I think it was mid last year, um, an exhibition by Born Free, found a small group of lions in Mpem and Dijem National Park in Cameroon. We had another few sightings reported of lions in Luwando Special Nature Reserve. And what's really cool about the sighting is that the pride consisted of a female with a few cubs. And this female was actually the first one seen in the area for at least a decade. Um, and this sighting on the right hand side in Malawi is of a young male or male lion who was seen in Nika National Park in Malawi. So this is actually the lion that was seen and it actually took several months for Central African Wilderness Safaris in Malawi to actually capture him on camera. And as you can see, he looks really nervous and quite skittish of people. Uh, lions that aren't used to human presence or, incur or occur in areas where they are very heavily persecuted tend to avoid people completely and move away um, at the sounds of anyone approaching. So as you can imagine, this is often what makes it very difficult to try and get data um, from countries where lions are in areas where they are heavily persecuted or where they don't see humans quite often. So these kind of areas include Central African Republic, Sudan, South Sudan, and some areas in Ethiopia. So the data that we're getting from those areas is far less than, area, than what we're getting from areas in Southern Africa. So I thought I'd end off with a quick look at how South Africa's lion population is faring. We are very fortunate to be one of the few countries that have more than a thousand lions. And if you remember me mentioning earlier, only seven countries across Africa are estimated to actually have more than a thousand. But not only that, South Africa is one of the few countries that actually has an increasing population of wild lions. And this isn't to say that our lions are threat free. Unfortunately, in recent years, we're seeing that there's an increase in the number of lions that are intentionally killed for their body parts. These lions tend to be targeted um, through poisoning to try and kill them to, as I said, get their body parts. 
So the largest populations in South Africa include the population in the Kruger National Park in Mpopo and Mpumalanga, in Mpumalanga and also the Kalahari Femsbok, which is in the northern reaches of the Northern Cape. South Africa also has a network of 57 additional reserves across the country that are considered to be wild managed. So these areas are fenced off but do have, a, um, do have lion prides within their boundaries. What some people might not know is that South Africa also has a small free roaming population. So by free roaming population, I mean that these lions aren't contained within a fenced area. So these lions occur in the Mapungubwe area and just in northern Limpopo, and they, they move freely between Botswana, Zim, and South Africa, clearly not adhering to any lockdown rules. So a latest estimates estimate that we have approximately 300 lions in South Africa, sorry, 3,000 lions in the country. So just looking a bit forward, uh, the, pro the funding for the project continues until the end of 2020. But in the meantime, we'll continue to collect data to include in the ALD. As you saw from that map earlier, we've only got 25% of lion range represented in the African Lion Database and we intend to increase that significantly in the upcoming months. We'd also like to start with creating outputs and data summaries per country and possibly also on a continental scale. So this is just an example of one of the draft outputs that we've put together for Malawi. This is just a map showing where lions occur. I just want to reiterate that this is a draft and doesn't include all the range, but you can see from the little green areas here, this is where we know lions definitely do occur, whereas these um, orange stripes kind of areas indicate where it's transient range. So that means where lions occur, but they aren't resident throughout the year. So it could perhaps be a bit of a corridor for lions to move from one national park or lion area to another. So we'll also plan on updating all the figures that I've presented on the presentation today to get them more up to date and reliable. We also want to start identifying those areas that require surveys and that are currently data deficient. So through this data collection process, we've already started to kind of pinpoint areas that require survey effort. Either we're unsure that lines occur there and no one can really confirm or that their numbers aren't known. So we want to start identifying these areas where we can recommend surveys be done. We also would like to create an online platform and some of the elements that I presented on today will be accessible to the public. So things such as the maps and general population figures and some resources as to where we got our data from. And we'll also have quite a bit on what the ALD project actually is. And, um, and it'll include some um, of the processes that, processes that we followed. Obviously all the data we get cannot be included in the database because it is a scientific project we need to make sure that all the data we include it is accurate to some point. So we'll share more on the processes at that point. So we're hoping that the online platform will be established towards the end of this year. So thank you everyone again for joining. It was a very brief pr presentation, but I hope everyone found it useful. I'm just going to turn on my video now. Um, I'm going to do a couple of the questions from the Q&A box. Um, I just want to reiterate as well that the presentation will be available on the EWT's YouTube channel. Um, okay, let me figure out how to use Q&A. Um, okay, so Heidi says, do lions from North Africa look the same as ours in South Africa? And the answer is no, there are also some, um, mal some minor differences. If I remember correctly, they're a bit smaller. Their manes are often um, a lot thinner. Uh, there's a lot of studies um, that have been done as to justify why, but I can't quite remember them off the top of my head, I'll let you know. Um, but they do look a little bit um, more different than our Southern and Eastern African lions. Um, so it's great that you, oops, sorry. It's great that you have 33% of organizations you contacted coming together to help lions. Knowing numbers is so critical to their future and how plans can be made to protect them further. So what do you think is holding back organizations from sharing their data with you? So this has been quite a challenge through the project. Data is a asset for many people and organizations spend a lot of money to gather their data. And it's, it's, it takes a lot for people to share their data willingly with another project. Some people have shared um, their data, but have put really strict restrictions on it. So we can't share it past the project. Other people have been more willing about we can share it. 
So it just depends on um, what people's intention for their data is. What I found is a lot of people haven't actually responded just because they've been so busy and are in the field. Obviously, a lot of the people that I'm working with are field-based line researchers who don't sit in front of their computers all day, every day, and don't always have the time to send emails with data. But what I'm finding is that with this lockdown period, all those line researchers are now out of the field and in front of their computers. So I'm hoping in the next month that number will actually increase quite a bit. Um, okay. Does EWT allow conservation students to do practical uh, projects with the organization? I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, I think we do have volunteers. And um, Charlotte, if you could just pop me your email address and I will get back to you with a bit more details on that. And um, is there a fear of, or issue of bottlenecking of the populations of lions as has happened with cheetahs? And none, I think there's more of an issue with lions in West and Central Africa specifically because the populations are so small that there is concern regarding the genetic diversity of the species within certain protected areas. In Nigeria, for example, I think it's Nigeria, I can quickly have a look at my map that I have here. Um, there are only two protected areas that have lions and it's about 50 individuals. So it is a bit of an issue there with regards to um, with regards to collecting data. But I don't think it's an issue in South Africa. Uh, a lot of the small fenced reserves are work under the Lion Management Forum, where together they work together to move lions between protected areas to maintain that genetic movement between populations. So does the EWT do community work to increase acceptance of lions by farmers and ranchers? And the EWT Carnival Conservation Project works a lot with um, communities and farmers, especially in the Waterberg and, and KZN areas, not specifically just to focus on lions, but other, other carnival species. Um, wild dogs occur free roaming in the Waterberg. So we have projects that are targeted in those areas specifically to promote carnival human coexistence. Um, do lights on farms and villages actually help deter lions away from them to minimize human and lion conflict? Yes, there have been studies that show that, that these flashing light devices actually work if they're installed around a kraal, that lions do kind of get deterred um, away from them, but I'm not quite sure on how effective they are. I know they are to some point. Um, do you... Did you approach conservation authorities in various countries for information? Yes, we have approached all local governments and a few have engaged with us and have contributed data. Others are still moving through their data sharing agreements. So with a lot of them, we have to set up uh, memorandums of understanding so that both parties understand what we're going to use the data for and what are the limitations around the data. Um, Hi Sam, do you envision the ALD project assisting with any policy planning in various African countries, i.e. what buy-in is there from government or formal, at a formal conservation level? And um, so yes, that one of the main goals of the ALD is actually to facilitate um, this kind of policy planning. So by providing accurate information to show how many lines there are, what kind of threats they're facing and how best we can conserve them. Um, I have a range of committees that help me set up this um, African Lion database, and one of them is actually the Range States Representative Committee, where I've got representatives from various range states who actually sit on the committee and help guide the development of this, um, of this project. And we have had quite a few buy-in in, um, sorry, we have had quite a few buy-in at a governmental level. And at a South African level, I do present on the National Action Alliance Task Force, and the South African government has, um, well, the Department of Environmental Affairs has agreed to contribute data where they can. So we have had buy-in there. Um, uh, which, of the small, whoops, which of the smaller reserves in South Africa hold the largest lion populations outside of Kruger and the Khalakhadi? And um, I think my, the data that I have at the moment is that Lufui currently has the um, highest population number. Um, I can't recall that number offhand, but that does seem to be one of um, the largest. And um, 
but also outside of Kruger, there's the adjoining protected nature reserves that occur next to Kruger, and they also have a high number of lions in that area. Um, so uh, thanks for the presentation. Is the EWT planning similar projects for other species as well? Um, I'm not particularly sure if we are going to extend the African lion database to follow on for to other species, but I know other projects have other um, project organizations have been implementing the same kind of project. So the African elephant database was actually created in the 1980s by the African elephant specialist group. So that has been going for, ooh, I'm going to do mass live. Shall I do that? 40 years, a few decades um, to actually consolidate lion population and distribution data. That's elephant, yes, elephant data from across the continents. And that's been working really well. I know the hyena specialist group has also undertaken a project to try and consolidate um, hyena data for all, all four hyena species that occur in Africa, and they are doing up-to-date population mapping. So this kind of project is being replicated amongst various different species. Um, I know there is, the, there is the talk about potentially expanding the African lion database to include species like um, leopard and possibly cheetah, um, because those are species that are listed under the African Carnivore Initiative, of which the African lion database is a tool for that initiative. So there is the task of, there is the potential to include them, but I mean, it is a mammoth task just to include one species. So to expand it, to incorporate a few more is going to be quite extensive. And also the data that you generally collect for different species can be quite different. So incorporate, including them all together might be a bit challenging. Um, oh, sorry, close that there. Um, are there any lions in the free states? As of this point in time, I'm not 100% sure. I haven't had any data submitted for lines in the free states. I know, um, so I don't think there are. Okay, Charlie says, is looking at whisker spots the best way to ID lions or is looking at ear cuts or anything else okay on the body as well? So yes, whisker spot patterns are one of the best ways to ID um, lions, especially in areas where you can't regularly dart them to actually do ear notches or branding. So looking at the whisker spots, so they are the little spots you can see on this picture here, just around the male lion's muzzle, there's the little whisker spots and those are unique to each and, each and every lion. So you can ID lions like that and count lions like that. So you know when you've counted one individual already, you look at the spots. It is quite time consuming, but with advancements in um, artificial intelligence, I'm sure this will be an online, a very quick kind of computer process in the future. Okay, um, I think that, okay, would uplisting of the lion on the IUCN red list help conservation attempts? Um, yes, it will. By, so basically, just so everyone is on the same page, a red list status is the status of how the population is doing. So it can either be endangered, critically endangered, extinct, vulnerable, least concern, or data deficient. So listing them as endangered would require um, more conservation action potentially than a species that is listed as least concern. And um, in South Africa, lions are actually listed as least concern because we have an increasing population of lions that are fairly well protected. But lions in West and Central Africa are actually listed as critically endangered because of that subspecies of lion, there's less than two, uh, there's a lot less lions than there are of the Southern and Eastern African lion. So just for interest's sake, uh, we have two subspecies of lions, which as I have kind of alluded to, is the Eastern and Southern African lion, they're closely related, as well as the Western and Central African lion are closely related. Um, so just looking at a, the last few, I think that is all the questions that I can get to today. If you have any questions that I didn't get to or you think of anything else, please feel free to send me an email. My email address is on this last slide. Um, feel free to bombard me with your questions. I'm happy to answer them. And then once again, the video will be available on YouTube. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining. I really appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed it. Stay safe during these times. And yeah, bye.